Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. We are still talking about atoms and atomic orbitals. So this is still chapter 13 and this is part 2. So in the previous um, tutorial um, for chapter 13, we talked about orbitals and we talked about there are seven possible principal energy levels. Each energy level has a number of sublevels equal to the number of the levels. So one has one, two has two, and so on. The sublevels are named. They are S, P, D, F, G, H, and I. Um, and we looked at some visualizations that in S it always has a spherical shape, and P is a dumbbell shape, and D is kind of clover leaf. So we're going to take that a little bit farther today. So starting with each S orbital is always spherical in nature. And again, that sphere represents the probability of finding an electron, which is better than 90% inside that sphere, so less than 10% outside. Each P orbital has a so-called dumbbell shape like this. And again, the region where there is not a pretty color dumbbell is the region where it would be very unlikely to find the um, electron. And so um, I said that there are three p orbitals. They lie on the x, y, and z axes. So this is the px, the py, and the pz. And remember that they are all, if they're occupied, they're all hanging out layered on top of one another. So again, the x, the y, and the z. And again, there would be an s sublevel um, layered within that. And then if we talk about the d orbitals, four of them are clover leaf shaped. So here's the xy, the xz, the yz, and the x squared minus y squared. And the fifth d orbital has a funny, they call it a dumbbell with a donut. And that is the so-called z squared orbital. And again, these are showing you the probability of finding the electron in space. These are the so-called fuzzy clouds. So each orbital, regardless of what kind of orbital it is, whether it's an S, P, D, F, each orbital may only contain a maximum of two electrons. So with n equals one, there's only one sublevel. It's called S, and it would contain two electrons. So the maximum number of electrons for this level would therefore be two. So this little chart, since I said to you we're only going to worry about n equals 1 through 4 for principal energy levels, we could go through and we could figure this out. So at um, n equals 1, the only sublevel is called s. There's only one orbital, and it has two electrons. If we go at n equals 2, two sublevels s and p, s can hold 2. There are three p electrons, so 2 um, electrons per orbital. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. S, P, D, now the D sublevel has 5 orbitals. 5 times 2 is 10 electrons. 10 plus 6 plus 2 is 18. And then finally at N equals 4, S, P, D, and F. So 2, um, 6, 10, 14, so we get 32. So again, that's the number, total number of electrons that could occur at that particular level, um, principal energy level. So um, this is what I call the Orbitron Gallery of Atomic Orbitals. So this is showing you what S orbitals look like, what P's look like, what D's look like, and what F's look like. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move forward. So um, there are specific rules that people have figured out about how electrons actually fill orbitals. And the first is the Aufbau principle. It states that electrons enter the lowest energy orbitals first. Now remember, the closer you are to the nucleus, the lower the energy. And the uh, principal levels are numbered 1 through 7, starting at the nucleus and moving out. So the Aufbau principle, which literally comes from the German word to build up Aufbau. So the next slide shows the order in which the orbitals actually fill. So we call this an Aufbau diagram. 
And what this is showing you is that there are seven possible energy levels and what this is showing you how they fill. And it turns out that they fill in 1S, we follow the arrows, and then the next is the 2S, and then the 2P and the 3S, and then the 3P and the 4S. Notice that the 4S fills before the 3D, and that's just the way electrons work. So it turns out that the 4s is lower in energy than the 3d, and the 5s is lower in energy than the 4d, and so on. And we'll talk more about this as we start filling in electrons with worksheets. So the second uh, rule that we follow when we're talking about how electrons occupy orbitals is called the Pauli exclusion principle. And that states that an orbital may only hold a maximum of two electrons. And those electrons must have opposite or paired spins. So if you think about electrons for a minute, they're negatively charged. And we know that like charges repel. So how do they pull that off? And they have what is, uh, what is called coupled spins. So for our purposes, we're going to say they have opposite spins. And we're going to show that in a two-dimensional sense with one having an arrow pointing up and one having an arrow pointing down. And you'll see that we'll use an arrow to denote an electron. So Hunt's rule applies to P and D sublevels and the orbitals. And so here is a representation of a P sublevel PX, PY, PZ, and a D sublevel DXY, DXZ, DYZ, DX squared minus Y squared, and DZ squared. So filling the P sublevel, we're going to put the first one there, and we're going to resist the urge to put the second one pointing down next to it. It's got to go there and the third one's got to go there. So we can't start pairing these up until each of the orbitals in this sublevel has an electron. Same thing goes for the Ds. You have to put the first one, and the second one, and the third, four, and five. We cannot pair them up until everybody has an electron. So then, to continue this, According to Hund's rule, the electrons will only pair, enter an occupied orbital, when each orbital at that level contains an electron. So here's our P and D sublevels. So to fill a P sublevel, we would do 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6. Similarly, to fill a D sublevel, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So to summarize, there are three rules that we must follow. The first is AFBAO. That means that we always start at the lowest energy um, filling. The second is the Pauli exclusion. You uh, cannot put more than two electrons into an orbital. And the third is Hund's rule, and that's when you're filling um, any sublevel that has more than one orbital of equal energy. You have to put an electron in each orbital before you start pairing them up. So we fill orbitals according to the three rules. And there are three ways that we represent electron configurations. So we've started working with worksheets and I'm going to summarize. The first thing is called orbital notation where you draw the orbital diagram. So helium only has um, an S sublevel, and we would draw in our two electrons, so that would be an orbital draw. We could also use the electron configuration notation, which is the one-line configuration. So for instance, for helium, it would be 1S2 telling us that the 1S um, level is filled and it has two electrons. And then there's the noble gas configuration. And here I'm going to give you the noble gas configuration for sodium, where we would use neon, the noble gas that comes before sodium, and then just show what comes after it. And this is the way it's shown in the periodic table. Now, we've been filling in some diagrams, and it's important to note that there are a few exceptions to these rules. There are some elements whose atoms do not follow the rules, and the three that I will hold you responsible for are chromium, copper, and molybdenum. 
So let's see what that looks like. For chromium, the outbound principle predicts an electron configuration of 3D4, 4S2. And what we actually find experimentally is 3D5, 4S1. And that's because although the outbound principle would predict a full S sublevel and an empty D orbital, what actually happens is one of the S's leaves the 4S and instead occupies the 3D sublevel. Similar thing happens with copper. The outbound predicts a 3D9 4S2 and experimentally we find a 3D10 4S1. So apparently it's uh, more stable to have um, one of the S electrons migrate up to the D level. Um, so here is uh, what would be predicted for copper, and here is what the actual configuration is, and again, one of the S electrons ends up in a D sublevel, filling that sublevel. And finally, molybdenum, the outbound principle predicts the configuration of 4D4, 5S2, and experimentally what we see is 4D5, 5S1. So let's show this is what outbound predicts, the full S sublevel, and what actually happens is only one electron in the S sublevel. So again, instead of 5S2, we get 5S1 and 4D5. So for now, this is Miss Augustine, and I'm going to sign off.